Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is Two Back or Not to Back. We're going to go through a variety of campaigns, talk about the stretch goals, the pledge levels, all the things in the campaign, and of course, does it make sense to get it or not? But before we dive into all of that crowdfunding goodness, let's go ahead and start off with our Cult of the Now. Cult of the Now is a segment where we take a look at a currently available game, and in this case, it is a pre-order, which I try to avoid for Cult of the Now, but it's also a pre-order that a whole lot of people have their hands on, so I will make an exception in this case, and that's going to be Wormspan. Wormspan, which uh, from Jamie Stegmaier from Stone Maggie Games, which decided to avoid crowdfunding entirely because that's been Stonemeyer's um, um, modus operandi for the past, what is it, eight years, nine years? It's been a while since they've been on crowdfunding. Maybe not that long, but it's been a while since they've been on crowdfunding. But either way, Warspan, an incredibly popular game that uh, you can check out a review on the channel if you want to see that. You can check out reviews and gameplays and any number of comparisons on any number of channels if you want to see a ton of content on it. But for $50, you can go ahead and get this from Game Nerds. Uh, it's on pre-order, so you're not getting it right away, but at least it's a cult of the now-ish instead of cult of the year and a half from now. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the campaigns, and of course, usual disclaimer that I work for GameFound. Please take that please take that into account as we go through these videos. But let's go ahead and start off with the uh, board game adjacent category. We have Dungeons and Lasers KK from Arkham Studio over here. This is going to be uh, 2,800 backers so far, a million dollars raised. Uh, this is continuing their Dungeons and Lasers series of uh, campaigns. They've done a bunch of these, six precisely by the number six that you can see over there. But this one's going to be bringing you a large focus on terrain and even pre-painted terrain. It seems like, uh, as well as of course some miniatures as well. They generally have a combination of terrain and miniatures when they do these over here and I'm not going to heavily go into all of this because well, there's so much. There's so much stuff you can go through. They have a bunch of comparisons, you know, what the what you're getting over here, what things look like, different other sets, uh, Dwarven Forge, uh, Wiz, Wiz Kids Warlock tiles, showing you different comparable items. We'll actually be showing you Dwarven Forge shortly. They show you different themes, and then you can scroll through the page to your heart's content to see an absolute ton of this stuff. If you are someone who wants any form of terrain, whether pre-painted or not, uh, if you want to get some of the stuff at a relatively uh, affordable price point, relatively just because this stuff is going to be expensive, but in comparison to other options out there, it's reasonably well-priced. Let's go Going to be uh, uh, the Dungeons and Caves from Arkham Studios. And then, of course, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, and there's a whole lot of scrolling to go through over here, there's just, just tons of stretch goals and what, and pages and optional buys and add ons over here. There's also going to be miniatures as well, in case you want to get a bunch of miniature options in addition to your terrain options. This is coming to you from Arkham Studio. Continuing this in the exact same light, well, not exact same light, but a similar light, we have Starforge, hand, hand painted sci fi terrain by Dwarven Forge. Dwarven Forge have had a ton of campaigns, are bringing their new their terrain, their, uh, I believe. I believe it's called their Dwarvenite. The Dwarf Knight is going to space with uh, flippable terrain tiles that, again, has comes in very in regular versions and pre-painted versions. This is going to be their patented Dwarven Knight material, which holds up to quite a beating. If you see this stuff at conventions, this stuff is like, I mean, whatever the Dwarven Knight's made out of it, it works. But uh, past that, they're going to be, uh, you know, flippable terrain, so you can be inner hallways, you can be outer edges, and they have a ton of videos showing you different ways it breaks down, reassembles, different options, as far as the different pledge levels and what you can get for different options and how you can construct and build it and modulate it, because the entire terrain set is designed to be incredibly modular. Again, stuff's going to cost you a pretty penny. All this stuff does. Like, you can find yourself spending thousands of dollars to get any of these things, but again, reasonably priced in the vein of, like, I don't, I don't know, it's expensive. It's expensive stuff for a premium product over here. That's going to be the Dwarven Forge uh, sci-fi terrain over here, uh, you know, the newest line of terrain. And then from there, we have in the not yet funding category, we have a few campaigns to go over. We have Algae from Game Brewer. Uh, they've been, uh, they've always been an interesting one in the sense that they've, they're for the past, I feel for the past like two years, they've had, they've been hit or miss with their campaigns. Some of them have been landing and doing well, others not quite so much. Uh, this one has not yet quite found its audience. Uh, there are actually aspects of the game that kind of remind me a bit of uh, Sankori, which is a game I recently loved. The way you have like this school and teaching, and you're moving up the tracks to plan your ascension to the tracks. But past that, there's going to be another Euro game from Game Brewer. Uh, if you are one of the subscribers, you can get it at a cheaper price point. I'm not going to heavily dive into this one. My guess is we are looking at a cancellation and we oh no no it's gonna fund it's gonna fund this is the tricky part it will fund but it's gonna be close so like i don't know we'll see how it goes but either way uh this one is probably again it's called the not yet funding category because sometimes they will fund this one will cross that finish line probably but it's gonna be close so i don't know if they're looking at a cancellation and relaunch or if they're gonna go ahead and power through on this one uh, but again their campaigns they've had some really good games that have come out some really good campaigns some campaigns have been incredibly well received and they've also had those that haven't found their mark quite as much uh, this one i would have thought had more of an appeal although i don't know like this board over here it looks great but some of these other player board areas don't necessarily appeal to me as much and people do buy with their eyes with these crowdfunding games so I don't know. I am curious why this one has not landed quite as much with their audience as their other games sometimes do. Moving on over here, we have Craft Wagon, Age of Engineering, and Dragon's Gold. 
This one over here, uh, $9,517 out of a $10,890 goal. This one will fund for sure, but again, not yet funding category for right now. This is going to be Craft Dragon and Dragon's Goal. This is from a new publisher, Samurai Games, who previously came back to crowdfunding, came to crowdfunding with just Dragon's Goal. They went through a cancellation and relaunch, and now they're back with Craft Dragon and Dragon's Goal, both of these being reprints or from the original games from uh, Matthias Kramer and Buddha for Duty Games over here. I've played Dragon's Gold, very solid game, very uh, interesting, fun game with a dash of cheating in there. Like, they, I don't know if they're keeping it, but there is a cheating card in there, unless you cheat. Almost got into a real problem with my friend over that one because I didn't know that was a thing and I saw him cheating, and so that is what it is. But past that, we also have Craft Dragon, which is a game I haven't played myself. And this one over here, we're going to have it coming with two pledge levels over here. We have a 25 euro, I think two pledge maybe two pledge levels, no more than that. We have 25 euro for the Dragon's Gold, we have 55 euro for Craft Wagon, and then we have 75, 75 euro for both of those, so you're going to get a five euro savings if you're getting both of those as well. And then there's retailer pledges as well. Uh, that's going to be uh, this one. Again, not yet funding, so we'll see how it goes, but almost certainly will be crossing that finish line. And then lastly, we have uh, Ugmu Age of Discord over here from Aethernet Studios. Only 36 backers in this one. And again, surprise, this one, going back to people buying with their eyes, this one had a decent amount of followers. Uh, the game looks pretty good. I thought this one would be an easy funding, but uh, I'm not right about everything, uh, fortunately. Fortunately for uh, all my friends, I'm definitely not right about everything. I'm far from it. But I'm, I'm usually decent when it comes to knowing what crowdfunding campaigns are going to fund or do decently, and I I would have thought this would be doing better than 36 backers. And either way, there's going to be a dice, uh, I believe it's dice drafting or dice uh, dice assigning or whatnot. You can be assigning rolling dice, assigning to your abilities over here. But again, I'm not going to heavily go into the game because I don't anticipate this one crossing the finish line at this point, uh, I mean, which I previously did, but my, my predictions at this point are probably a bit more accurate with only 36 backers uh, out of, you know, I mean, 41 days left is a lot of time, but... I don't anticipate any major changes. And so that's where we are with the uh, the first two categories, the board game adjacent and the not yet funding, which means, give me a second, take a sip of coffee, and we'll be back with the uh, actual campaigns of which there are a lot to go through. See, this is not my Ember mug, unfortunately, because I just made the kind of instant coffee. You know those uh, AeroPress? I used an AeroPress and made this because I just needed something. But um, it's the coffee's not bad, but the lack of Ember mug is... Tactical error. Tactical error. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off with the uh, campaigns of the week. We have Logic and Lore, a cozy but competitive deduction game for two players. $17,000 raised out of $4,000 goal to goal, coming to you from uh, Weird Giraffe Games, 565 backers. This is a two-player deduction game. It's going to be a deduction game where you get to ask questions about your rows of cards while you try to align everything properly and then see who can get there first. Uh, this is basically going to be a little pu fun solo, not solo, it's going to be a fun little logic puzzle. Uh, lots of people who play this game seem to have nothing but positive things to say about it. Uh, the, being, in, being a logic puzzle, you're going to be indicate your answers, like do these line up with those? Is this one before that one? You keep asking questions until you get to a yes while you line up your cards and try to utilize your knowledge to be able to figure out the order of your cards as you go through it. Uh, looks very cool. I like logic puzzles in general. I'm very compelled by it. I will say, as far as pricing goes, uh, this one's going to be $19 for the Logic and Lore, $39 for the Logic and Lore Plus Playmat, $45 for Logic and Lore Plus Wicked and Wise, which means that's going to be $26 for Wicked and Wise if you're doing your math, and that's important. We'll come back to that. And then over here, we have $50 for Friendly Local Game Store, and that's basically where we are. Now, the $26 for Look Wicked and Wise is a relevant point because, again, everything's going to depend on what your availability is. But if you look at a miniature market right now, because I just looked at a miniature market, you can get Wicked and Wise for $22. Obviously, this assumes, assumes you're already getting a free shipping order, but if you are, then effectively you're paying more to get it from the retailer here, while from, this, from the publisher here, while waiting for the game longer, or you can just get it from Miniature Market or your friendly local game store. In general, always do your own price shopping comparison. This is not the first time we'll see that kind of thing happen in this video. That kind of stuff does happen a lot, and sometimes it's not the publisher trying to get one over you, sometimes it's the publisher just respecting the fact that different people have the games at different price points, and they have to be fair to their retail partners, they don't want to undercut their retail partners, and that's the publisher's decision, and up to you to go ahead and try to figure out what the best price point for you is to make sure you're getting what makes sense for you. Again, it's not just the, the, the $4 difference. It's like, that's one thing. But you're also waiting a year to get your hands in it too, whereas you can just get it now. And that is likely going to hold true for logic and lore as well, because... $19 in Logic and Lore, that is a good price point for the game itself, but once you factor in the shipping, you're once again in the same situation, this game likely will be cheaper if you just wait and get it at retail. The game looks great, I'm very interested in the game, I, I like Logic puzzles, and there's lots of uh, solid testimonials and opinions around the game so far, so definitely interested in this one, definitely recommend checking it out if you like this type and genre of game, but if you're looking for the cheapest price point, your friendly local game store, or friendly online local game store, is likely going to be the place to get it. Uh, versus if you don't mind paying a few dollars more, and you know, waiting a year and a half or whatnot, then you are supporting the creator by backing it on crowdfunding. Moving on, we have Fantasy Forum, a button-shy wallet game. $33,000 to raise so far, 1,400 backers. Fantasy Forum is going to be a, uh, a solo game, I believe, solo-only game, where you're going to be feeding your rival alchemists. You're going to have a bunch of cards that uh, kind of build out your... Um, 
the enemy you're fighting against over here in the game. This is going to be coming to you from Buttonshire over here. It's going to be uh, $3 for the print and play. It's going to be $12 for Fantasy Form, which includes Fantasy Form plus the little expansion as well. So you're getting the base game plus the, the initial mini expansion. This is very typical of Buttonshire. You're going to have the Fantasy Form over here. No, that's international. You're going to have the uh, Fantasy Form and Spaceship for $22. So additional $10 to get your hands on Spaceship. And then $32, which means an additional $10 to get your hands on all the expansions for Spaceship if you want to get your hands on that. So just bundling a previous game together with a new game. That's going to be Fantasy Form and Spaceship coming to you from Fantasy from button shy games uh, as usual button shy i usually say the same thing every single time their campaigns are often the cheapest way to get your hands on it is usually backing on the crowdfunding campaign but if you're looking for whether it'll hold this value almost always not the nature of paying for shipping getting your hands on a small box game by the time you get it and then turn it around and sell it whatnot usually these things are better off being uh, gifted or just sold for really really cheap to just uh, deal with the headache off your get off your list of stuff to do uh, usually you're not gonna be getting your much money back on these button shy games uh, if you're selling a whole package or bundle it's a little easier it's just the work to reward on these is usually not worth it as much. So if your focus is on getting at the cheapest price point though, then yes, getting on crowdfunding is very easy. It's the easiest way to get all the stuff you want at a good price point because they usually give you a little bit of a savings on this uh, little mini expansion packs. Moving on, we have the presence of Victoria Hor Victorian Horror Board Game. 1,481 backers, six days to go, $86,000 raised. The presence is an interesting game because it's either cooperative or semi-cooperative and you don't really know until you're playing it. You see, the players are playing as the actual spirit in the game who may or may not be on your side and then the players who are trying to align towards the spirit's goals or cards or whatnot in the game as you wander around the mansion. Now the tricky part of that as you go through this over here is you don't know the spirit, you don't know which spirit you've gotten. You don't know if the spirit is on your side as you play this game or not because if the spirit is working against you, well then it's a uh, sort of semi-cooperative as you go through it. You have a lot of a lot of players who are on the same team, but not so much on the spirit side. Versus the spirit might be working towards your best interest, and you just don't know. So it's either fully cooperative or not, and you don't have that information. And the spirit can't really just directly go out and tell you in the game. So it's an interesting twist as far as how the game works. And I'm curious to see how that is balanced around the game state because you have to have the players who are playing it have to have they have the tension of not knowing how things are playing out. But ultimately, you either have an ally or you don't have an ally, which is a totally different shift. But very fascinating concept and idea in the presence over here. Uh, the pledge levels are going to be fifty six dollars for the presence and then you know a retail pledge to get a bunch of other things if you want a bunch of other things that's going to be the uh, pledge levels over here as far as should you back or should you not will hold this value uh, so far it's doing fairly well 1400 backers does mean that there is likely going to be a retail presence on this game not a guarantee to be clear but usually with the game, usually when a game has several, like over a thousand backers, there's a stronger chance that it will find some sort of retail partnership or presence because that's enough of an indicator of demand, which means you can probably expect to see this at some point. And the question is the when and the how, and that goes back to the $56 plus shipping, it means you are looking at a okay price point, but not necessarily an amazing price point. Kind of depends on a bunch of factors from will it hold its value in the second hand market, which I'm skeptical it will, and then what will the retail presence be like? Retail presence, <laughs> the retail presence, I just, that's funny. The retail presence be like because the retail presence is going to be a big factor in terms of whether this is cheaper at all or able to get your hands on it. So instinctively, it, it falls into that category of if you're just concerned about the FOMO and all that, by all means back it. But if, I, if you're looking for whether it's the best way to get your hands on it, likely not, but you're obviously taking a risk that you know that maybe you're wrong and maybe it doesn't show up. Maybe it's hard to get your hands on it. Those things are always risks to take and you have to uh, be a responsible person when you go ahead and choose what to back or not to back. Then we have the Candy Hunters. Candy Hunters and Smart Flamingo. This is uh, 275 backers, 9,000 euro raise so far. Candy Hunters is a little uh, tile moving game. You try to create patterns and uh, get yourself a scare off the various uh, kids and whatnot in this game. Kind of reminds me of, I don't remember what it's called, but there was that, like, last year Halloween time on Kickstarter, there's another game that kind of had a, like, a very lighter theme with ghosts and candy and Halloween and trick-or-treating. Was it called Trick-or-Treat? Was it was that what it was called? I don't remember. I mean, I know Meg covered it on the channel, so there's that, but I don't remember the name of the game. But either way, it kind of reminds me of that. Like, you just have this, like, little kind of last-minute pop-up from a first-time creator with, a, you know, art that could be AI. I have no idea. I have no idea if there's AI art. The tricky part nowadays is even, I feel bad even saying could be AI because could be AI, could be nothing. It also could not be AI. But it has that, like, slightly more more cartoonized thing where that more cartoonized look it does fit more normally into an AI style but again I have no idea I shouldn't have even said anything I should not have said anything because I just don't know and I don't want to I don't want to get them in trouble by saying something that out of the blue but either way it just gives me similar vibes to those two games that's my point because the last game had AI that's what I was thinking that so it gives me similar vibes as far as this like pal, like pop-up game that just shows up and whatnot and not this is not in any way a ding against the game by the way not in the slightest I just find it interesting this little like kind of just two cute little Halloween games that are much lighter than you typically find on crowdfunding but finding their crowdfunding audience nonetheless from two different companies. Anyways, that's going to be uh, Candy Hunters over here. 
You get some uh, stretch goals over here, some advanced pattern cards, some pumpkin upgrades, solo puzzles, all of that. They have their other games as well, so they do have these other games, either an AI space pu space puzzle game. We have all those, and then we have the can hunters all in, all that stuff with expansion content for the game as well. Uh, but as far as pledge levels, pledge levels are going to be over here if I can find them. We have the rewards. We have the uh, all in set for 35 euro. We have the can hunters base game for 17 euro, and then once you factor in shipping on those, that's going to be the big part because uh, the availability in this one's going to be likely less available. So if you want to get your hands on the game, you don't want to miss out on it. Yes by all means go ahead and back it but if you're looking for a game that will hold this value again probably not in this one the price point where there's extra shipping and all that and the demand i just don't think this all gonna combine to a game that holds this value down the road i think this is one of those things people see something shiny and fun and crowdfunding they go ahead and back it and it's gonna be harder to go ahead and convince somebody to part with the part with that same amount of money down the road uh if it's not a game for you moving on we have events of the south tigers two hundred ninety six thousand dollars raised 3700 backers we have nine days to go on this one coming to you from shem phillips from garfield games Events of the South Tigers continues the uh, Wayfair Scholars and Inventors trilogy, all revolving around uh, dice to some degree. This series, this particular series from Shem Phillips from Garpal Games, uh, this one is very much focused around the dice manipulation or different ways to utilize dice. Uh, Brothers Murph have a fantastic video in general. Brothers Murph do fantastic roundups showing you how to play different games in short, you know, five to ten minute snippets. I think it's like a six minute snippet, snippet this time. But either way, if you want to get a full feel of how to play with a lot more detail, highly recommend checking out that video. But past that, this completes the trilogy. We can expect to see various expansions for their games, I assume. And then as far as the why back now, very typical thing from Garfield Games. They don't focus on FOMO. They don't focus on anything other than, hey, there's a good reason to support us, especially if you're international. There's often a much harder to get your hands on our games, and so this kind of gives you everything all at once. But that also means their price points usually aren't the best. If you are someone who has access to a, you know, an online US retailer with a cheaper price points, usually their campaigns are not the best price point for that market. Uh, their, their campaigns are a better price point for international people who have a harder time getting their hands on the game as well as those who just want to get their hands on the game early or support a creator who is not engaging in any FOMO practices, who's just like, hey, I'm making a game, here's the game, here's a reasonable price point, not the best price point, here's a promo pack to uh, incentivize you to go ahead and get it, but past that you're paying a little more for the game and a little more for shipping, so it is what it is. Again, it falls in that category. It's just one of those tricky balances to get right because crowdfunding has to appeal to all markets, and that means that to some extent it might be a better deal for some markets and a worse deal for other markets when you're doing that. Uh, I will say, though, if you are interested in getting the Kickstarter packs for all their other games, for their previous games in the uh, South Tiger series, they have those available as well. So you could go ahead and put together to bundle whatever it is you want or need. So if you're looking for, you know, if you already found your hand, if you already got your hands on wafers or scholars and you want the uh, extra fun little goodies, that might be the thing you need to push yourself over the edge over here to back this project and get the extra Kickstarter packs from the previous campaigns to go ahead and round things out. So again, not a lot of FOMO going on here. Ultimately comes down to you want it, do you not? And price point wise, you can definitely wait and get your hands on it later. It will have a wide retail availability. Their games always do because they are incredibly popular. They do incredibly well. Garfield Games for many companies is like an insta back at this point and so uh that's what we have over here for inventors of the south tigers from garfield games now we have Etherstone from uh, Thundergriff Games, an evolving card game designed, designed by Virginio Gili and Simone Luciani, illustrated by Paolo Voto. Uh, coming to you from, uh, from Thundergriff Games over here, who have done a bunch of campaigns, but I think the, the one that they're most famous for nowadays is Darwin's Journey, which has gotten rave reviews across the board. Uh, but we have over here Etherstone, which is going to be a seven-card drafting game. You're going to draft a hand of seven cards with tons of combinations uh, while focusing on the best way to achieve your victory points. The concept of that sounds very appealing. The cards themselves, I will say, I'm interested and yet not sure about this game. I love the the idea of drafting cards in general. I love the idea of a wide variety of putting together the things that work towards your favor. If you've ever played Seasons, it kind of has that vibe to me where you're like, you're just trying to get the cards that work towards your engine. And I love Seasons. So if this is anything like Seasons, I could find myself loving that. But just looking at the cards, I'm not sure if I find it to be I'm not sure if I would find it to be incredibly rewarding in the way everything comes together, or perhaps a little fiddly. I don't know. I'm just this is all purely judgment from the call from looking at the cards. I, I don't actually I have not played the game yet. I have a vague idea of how to play it, but I have not played the game myself. This is more I'm interested. I'm definitely the target audience to some degree, and I'm also not a completely sole target audience, at least not yet. But interested, definitely an interested target audience. We have the either some base game over here for 30 euro. We have the deluxe edition for 55 euro, which is going to give you the physical copy of the game, wooden and metal deluxe components, and all the unlock stress goals of the base game and deluxe. We have the council bundle for 90 euro, giving you those extra, the dice tray, the play mats, and all that added in. And that's what we have over here for your pledge levels. As far as should you back, should you not, will it hold this value? Let's scroll down to shipping, because shipping's going to add on to that as well. Uh, looking at zone A over here, with the US over there, you're looking at basically 14 euro added on to the cost of your pledge. Uh, whatever it is, if it's pending, you know, base game, deluxe edition, deluxe is going to be 16 euro, the council bundle is going to be 20 euro. So you have to factor all those in, because that's not a small amount of extra being added to the cost of your game, which factors into the should you back it. And should you back it, should you not, will it hold this value? I'm 
was skeptical at will. And it's hard to say because if you look at Thundergriff's games, they are a mix. They are a large mix. If you look at their games and how well they've done the second-hand market, some of them have done tremendously well, others less so. So it's definitely more of a question mark. At the end of the day, I'm skeptical of this will just based on the type of game it is and just whether it will have that, that, that mass appeal or not. And I'm a little bit more skeptical at will, but their games have been all over the place, so I could absolutely be wrong in this. Some of their games, like Spirits of the Forest, always surprises me how well that one does on the second-hand market. So I could definitely be wrong with this one. I will say, no matter what, you'll definitely will have the opportunity to get your hands on this game in one form or another. The only question is whether you back it on crowdfunding now, possibly paying a little more, possibly paying a little less than it will be down the road, or whether you get it down the road and possibly pay a little bit more, a little bit less than what it would have been on crowdfunding. Either way you go, you're taking a small degree of risk, and it's not the end of the world, and then of course it's a second-hand market, especially if you're trying to get all those crowdfunding goodies. So again, this is really just a question about, you know, where are you going to pay a little bit more, and it is a bit of a question mark either way, uh, because Thundergrift Thunder games have been... They've had a wide degree of how well they've been received, ultimately. Moving on, we have Roth from Chip Theory Games. $395,000 raised, 3,480 backers, 11 days to go. Designed and illustrated by Manny Trimbley. Uh, this is going to be a designer who's co-designer of Dice Throne, as well as, you know, a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, but we have over here Roth, which is going to be an area control game for one to four players with a uh, neon, neon, a glaring neon design that some people absolutely love and others have uh, referred to as it looks like a unicorn threw up on their game board. And honestly, I get both of those camps. The first time I saw this board, the first time I saw it, I was like, is that a prototype? And then later, I kind of came together more and more. I was like, you know what? I actually kind of like the vibe. I like the 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 the, the very neon day glow vibe going on here. I actually appreciate it, which is funny because I, I never liked it in, um, what was the game? Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Dinosaur Island. Dinosaur Island, I never liked that vibe over there. But over here, I am I am, I am am into the vibe. But either way, I'm focusing too much on how the game looks and not how the game plays. Uh, you, you can check out my review on the channel. You can check out a bunch of gameplays of, you know, the, I believe there's solo gameplays out there as well. But there's solo, there's co-op, there's uh, competitive gameplays, there's review content. You can check out a ton of information about the game. Uh, this is going to be a $55 for the game over here if you want the, uh, the game over here, $55 for it. You're also going to have a bunch of extras you can get your hands on. So... We have over here, it's going to be a, like I said, a chip theory. It's going to be a chip theory game, but not actually utilizing chips. Instead, it's going to be utilizing dice and tokens over here. The dice are going to be your customized, unique warriors that each faction has. And the tokens are going to be, well, the tokens, your extra regular units that you have in the game. Although each faction has their own unique name for those regular units. Lots of stuff with the gameplay over here. Basically, area control, trying to get points, trying to take control of regions, scoring at the end of each round, uh, drafting dice to drive those actions. You're going to be drafting dice every round that are going to allow you to reinforce, to add units, to move around the board, to move all, to gather um, Korra, I think the resource is called in the game. You're going to get Korra. So a lot of things going on as far as this general gameplay itself. And then we have solo and co-op as well, which I have not played yet, but I'm hoping to table before the campaign is over. We had 11 days left. Was that what it was? I make no guarantees, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, past that, we have the, the various pledge levels. $55 for the base game over here. We have the gameplay all in for $86 over here. That's going to give you the base game plus the two additional factions. We have the Roth all in for $246. Yes, that is a hefty price point. It's also a decent amount of people have pledged that one. That's going to come to you, come to you with the uh, base game, the two um, the two expansions. It's going to come to you with the uh, the dice tray, all these metal, metal bits over there. So those um, little units, effectively, the units you have in the game all converted to metal and then we also have these art prints for the various factions in the game those are going to be added on to over here so if you're looking for the cheapest way to get your hands on absolutely everything that is going to give you the best price point because it's going to give you bundle savings not necessarily worth it because you're going to get a whole lot more things i mean chip theory is offering an affordable game relative to the other titles right now it's a fast playing game easy on the rules uh you know very different art style this is everything about this game is different than your typical chip theory offering in no way does it share like any similarities with anything they've done uh, except for like I guess it's a premium game. It's got neoprene mats. There's got that aspect. But in all as aspects, they're making it very different than what you typically expect to see from Chip Theory. But it also means you can go out, you can still spend $250 to get everything, or you can try to just go ahead and get the $55 for the, 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 the stuff you need. Bunch of stretch goals and all those things being unlocked. We have the art prints. I want to show you some of these. Actually, let's show you the, uh, the full range over here. So we have these metal art prints over here, a full range of metal art prints with the sizing of uh, 7.75 by 12 metal prints, uh, which look great. Uh, these over here, I have actually have a few metal prints that I've been meaning to hang up, and maybe I'll try to, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I am moving at some point, so I don't want to spend too much time messing with this set, but maybe when I finally have the new set, the new new set, there's the new set, and then there's the new new set. When I get to the new new set, maybe I'll start playing around with some of these wall prints, because I have like, I have one for Stalker, I have some from Andrew Bosley, and these over here would be a beautiful addition to add on to them. Anyways, that's all the stuff going on over here, which means, which means what else do we have over here? We have, that's what we got, that's what we got. So should you back or should you not, we'll hold this value, all that stuff. So like, um, 
Like Garfield games before them, Chip Theory generally does not engage in FOMO. Their stuff is always available, the only question is price point. So basically you can usually get a little bit of a savings by backing it on crowdfunding, or you can wait and get it down the road whenever you want. So there's no major FOMO here. If you are unsure in any way, I recommend just waiting. Get it down the road, whatever. You might, you might pay $10, $15 more, because you will pay, it well, depends. If you're looking for those bundled all-in stuff, you will get a lot more of a savings there. Nothing is exclusive still, but you will get more of a savings on if you're getting a bunch of the extra stuff that is completely unnecessary. But if you're just looking at the core core game experiences or the core gameplay experiences with the expansions and all that, uh, then at that point, you could get on crowdfunding, you will save a little bit of money compared to uh, retail down the road, but or you can just wait for retail down the road and just get you get it directly from uh, Chip Theory's website. It's worth calling out, because at one point I crossed where it says $55 instead of $65 MSRP, and because usually I poke at those things, I'm like, $65 MSRP, that means it's going to be $50 down the road. Usually that's true. In the case of Chip Theory, they don't really have a lot of retail partnerships. They really focus on selling it from the website, which means I think 20 Strong is the only exception. They're starting to have that in retail, but that does mean that 55 versus 65 is an actual representation of savings over there. So they actually will save money by backing it on crowdfunding. You might save only $10 for the core set, but the more stuff you buy, the more you're saving, but it's just a small amount of money. You're not looking at a massive savings. The only other question mark is when you're between print runs, you're between print runs. There's only so much chip theory you can do between print runs, and so that's when you might see the market spike on these games. But I think that in general, if you know you want it and you know you're gonna get it, get it on crowdfunding. Uh, as far as holding its value, likely still will, but not by a huge margin. Again, if you're just getting the base game, if you're only really saving $10, then the only way you can really like, get your money back fully on that is if you're waiting for between print runs when the game goes up in price point and people want your copy. So there's not a massive amount of secondhand market conversation here on this one, at least the base game alone. Uh, but if you are interested in this, go ahead and back if you know you're going to get it anyway, and if you're unsure, the savings might not be enough to push you over the edge. Moving on, we have Nexus Offs. Nexus, not Nexus Offs, different game entirely. Nexus Unsanctioned Big Box Expansion. $47,000 raised, 320, 321 backers, 11 days to go. This is an expansion to Nexus Arena, I want to call I, I want to say. Nexus Arena over there, which is basically a game of, uh, a skirmish game of just, you know, blade saws and spikes and death traps. You're basically in an arena that's constantly trying to kill you as much as the other players are in the skirmish game, and it's going to be an expansion to the table over here. This is the unsanctioned expansion, $90 over here, $20 off that retail price point, and this one does have low retail availability, so there is a factor in that as well. We have the board game bundle for $210, giving you the original base game, plus the expansion, and then the, uh, the, the roleplay bundle, which adds the legacy mode for $250, and then you have the all in bundle for $400. They're basically, hey, I want absolutely everything from the deluxified board to the metal coins to the uh, aluminum coins, I believe, all the various things for this game. And yes, by the way, the miniatures come pre-painted. I know you didn't ask that, but in case you did ask that, the miniatures on this game come pre-painted. But like I said already, this is basically a skirmish game. A skirmish game is going to have an arena and a battlefield trying to kill you. It's been around for quite some time. It's had campaigns on Kickstarter. It's had campaigns on GameFound. Uh, for what it's worth, for better or for worse, the creator has been very focused on trying to make this the best experience he can and continuously adding and developing and just, you know, having this available as something that he's trying to, you know, continuously support and add more content for and bring it around to your table in different ways. That's going to be the next over here. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold its value. Looking at the second market, it doesn't seem like it does hold its value so far. Uh, just looking around, and there are, like, I think I saw, like, one pledge that did sell for more than its value, more than what it cost. But in general, this is one, this is an expensive game. Definitely has some appeal. It has done decently on crowdfunding, but I am skeptical it will hold its value. It's an expensive game, and while there is definitely is some appeal, there's not necessarily enough to support it doing as well as you would like, as well as the creator would like on the second hand market so if you back this one it's not likely one that you're going to get your money back if it's not a game for you Moving on, we have Quest Over Coffee from Gabe Barrett. $20,000 raised, 886 backers, 11 days to go. This continues Gabe Barrett's solo game of the month, which I believe he started last month with uh, Nissan Crusoe. Was that what it was? Nissan, Nissan Crusoe, I think something like that. The coffee's not bad for coffee that's like lukewarm at this point. Not even lukewarm, it's basically cold. We have Quest Over Coffee, which by the way, highly recommend checking out the video on this one. The video is fantastically well done. Gabe Barrett does the videos himself, but if you're looking for a dash of humor as well as some explanation of the gameplay, uh, this one has you covered. But the basic idea is you have quests, because you have quests, because you want coffee, and you need to pay for coffee with points that will give you the quests, that the quests will give you points for. It's it's a whole thing. Quests and coffee. So, you're basically going to go ahead and uh, have a bunch of quests. You're going to have various allies and items that are going to help you along the way. You're going to roll dice and mitigate those dice with luck, items, and allies along the way. That's the idea of it. That's basically everything you need to do. Now, the basic original game of this is uh, basically a beat-your-own-score kind of game, although, as Gabe covers in the video, he doesn't like that. He likes games where you can win or lose, which is so much my jam. I can't stand beat-your-own-score games. I'll do them once, and I'll be like, that was good enough. Could I get 72 instead of 71 next time? Maybe. Am I going to try? Nope, I don't care. 
I like games where you can win or lose in this game. They've made tweaks to it. They've added that aspect. So if you want to beat your own score, you can do so. If you want a win or lose kind of mechanic, they have that aspect in there as well while maintaining the same basic core gameplay style. This is part of uh, Gabe Barrett's uh, Barrett Publishing Solo Game of the Month series where they're going to be doing every single month a pick it out a solo game that's going to have a few common denominators that are all relevant to whether you should or shouldn't back it because if you scroll down past the charming artwork down over here, we have the game is at least 99% finished. There's no stretch goals, no add-ons. The game is a limited edition that will not be available at retail, which is relevant. Matter of will begin immediately and the game will ship back to backers directly from China. That's going to be the combination aspect of the solo game series of the month. Shipping is going to run you around $5. There is a print and play option if you want that. But past that, the game itself is going to, I believe it's $20. Let me see if I can find that over there. I believe it's $20 for the game. $24 for the game. And that's where it's going to come into the uh, should you back, should you not, will it hold its value. Initially, it's, I'm skeptical that it will. This is kind of very similar to the um, button shine model. The main thing it has going against it relative to the button shine model is the games are more expensive. The main thing it has going for it compared to the button shine model is the games are theoretically not going to be available at retail, meaning there is some more of a sense of urgency of if you do want it, get your hands on it now because it may not be available down the road. I don't know what his plans are for print runs and you know future stuff. Maybe at the end of every year he'll do a best of solo series and like you know three or four of the best. I don't know. I don't know what the plans are. I think there is room for a conversation where these games are supported even if they don't have a retail support and I think that'd be fun because it'd be a shame to see games go uh you know never get reprinted if they are received well when they land but either way uh, that is the main factor as far as whether you should back it because these games again they're cheaper games that there's a lot of other competition in the market that are available at a more affordable price point which has me a little skeptical that it holds its value the only question mark is any of these games in the solo month the solo game of the month club that that come out that are incredibly well received and are not otherwise available until who knows when that's when you'll find people who are paying you know 40 bucks to get your hands on a game because they've heard so many good things and there just are no other options so skeptical to hold this value but there always is that long shot aspect when a game is received well moving on we have flashpoint legacy of flame 1800 backers one hundred sixty seven thousand dollars raised 11 days to go this is flashpoint legacy basically that's what it is it's flashpoint but legacy you can check out my first impressions on the channel and it's just first impressions because i got the first three scenarios to go through which gives me a limited degree of scope of seeing how this is going to iterate the very short version is i like flashpoint i like what flashpoint legacy does but i don't know if i've been as blown away in the first three games relative to how i felt about like you know other game systems that were legacy games so legacy is always like i like it i like the legacy system but there's Legacy always adds something more to the game. The question is, how much more does it add? And so far, I'm intrigued, but I'm not blown away yet. Will I happily play the whole thing? Absolutely, I will. Uh, am I blown away the way I was with, like, Pandemic Legacy or Ticket to Ride Legacy? Not quite there, at least not yet. But over here, we have uh, we have Flashpoint Legacy of Lame, $59 for the base game over here, plus all the various milestones, and there are various milestones you can get over here. And this will have a retail presence as well, so if you want to get it retail, well, there's reasons to get on crowdfunding, but a price point is not that reason. The reason is going to be supporting the creator, getting it early, or the various extras because price point is not the reason. We have Flashpoint Legacy of Flame plus a Fire Rescue. So $89 versus a $59. So basically, give me $30 extra to get your hands on Flashpoint now. Now, it's a relevant thing over here because right now, I believe if you go on Miniature Market, you can get Flashpoint for $28 instead of an additional $30. But it's worse than that because they also charge you an additional $10 for the shipping. So the shipping goes up by $10 if you get the Fire Rescue base game as well. So you're basically paying $12 more to get Flashpoint now as opposed to getting it online if you have a uh, Miniature Market Market order lined up. And honestly, between this and what was the other game we had between this and um oh my gosh wise um wise and wizard wizard and wise whatever it was between these two games you're already you're halfway towards your hundred dollar order if you want those but yeah that's the, the i'd say if you want flashpoint i do recommend flashpoint it doesn't seem like this campaign is the best way to get your hands on flashpoint now i did not break that out for all these other itemized expansions over here and that's where it might be a little bit more reason to get over here if legacy of flame plus fire rescue expansions might be a bit more reason primarily because of the fact that well, uh, they may not all be available at whatever store you're trying to get your hands on them at. So limited availability might make that the better option if you're getting everything. But if it's just there for the base game, I'd skip that. Then we have the, all the new stuff. That's going to give you Flashpoint Legacy of Flame, plus it's going to give you Neophene Player Boards, plus it's going to give you uh, the boards. All the various boards you can face off in this game are going to be uh, full meta, full cardboard boards. Basically, they currently have a flipbook situation, and if you want a full cardboard board, well, you have access to that. I believe these are all new maps for... Legacy of Flame. I don't even know if you could use them with regular Flashpoint. I, I I hope so. I hope you can. Like that would be a good way of just adding more content to your regular Flashpoint universe, especially if you get all these nice boards. So like that almost makes the price of the game like worth it for that stuff alone if you're a hardcore Flashpoint player. Anyways, as far as Flashpoint, Flashpoint is basically a game where you're firefighters, you're trying to rescue a bunch of people from a burning building, you're trying to keep the flames in check while rescue various people, and every single turn you do good stuff with your action economy, and then you roll dice and see how the fire explodes and uh, spreads across the board. That's basically the idea. Standard cooperative play. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's a good game. It's been around for quite some time. It's evidenced by very, very young Rodney Smith over here in this video. And that's basically Flashpoint. 
One of the first games I ever backed on Kickstarter was a Flashpoint game. I used to back all the Flashpoint stuff way back when, way before I fell down the Kickstarter rabbit hole. There were a few games I backed from Alien Frontiers to Flashpoint. So uh, yeah, I've been around for, I've been I've been following this. I've been a fan of the game system for a very, very long time. Before, before they even had miniatures for their firefighters. That's when I got on board. Anyways, we have all these various extras being added. All these are the, the, the optional buys. You have the milestones being added. So you have a metal coin for the scratch off stuff in style. You have various other cars and equipment specialists and other stuff from Indie Boards and Cards universes over here in their games. So lots of fun things being added. And the shipping thing is the main thing you want to pay attention to over here. It's $20 shipping for the base game, plus $30 if you want Flashpoint Legacy of Flame, $40 if you want that. You have to keep in mind where the extra things are being added because, again, that base game seems like it's only $30 more, but it's really an extra $40 more because of the shipping cost increase. So do all that math as well and see what makes sense for you. As far as you back, actually, you're not, will hold its value. It's a legacy game, so the legacy, the whole is found in the secondary market is a little less relevant. The main question is just retail now versus uh, retail later versus crowdfunding now. And to that end, you do get some extras by backing on crowdfunding now. I don't know if those extras are inherently worth it. I think, instinctively, I think not. By the time you factor in what the order will be down the road, uh, the fact that you're paying extra $20 shipping for it now as well, instinctively, I think waiting for retail is the better move over here, unless you really care about some of those extras, like, hey, that, that metal coin could be fun. Is it worth the extra $20 or whatnot that you're paying? I don't know if it is, but then you factor in all the other stretch goals. I think it really comes down to what kind of value you get from those extra stretch goals versus the relative extra that you're paying for it. Moving on, we have Base by Highlights 2045, Bases Loaded Edition, plus new All-Star Expansion. That's a mouthful of a name. Coming to you from Eagle Griffin Games, it's basically baseball highlights. Uh, we, not reloaded, well, reload. it's all the stuff. All the stuff of baseball highlights being put together over here. We have $44,000 raised, 864 backers, 11 days left to go on this one. Uh, baseball highlights basically taking you all the various stuff with some tweaks. They are doing some, they're giving you a lot more starter sets, but they're, uh, you know, getting rid of some of the older stuff. They have a whole note as far as what's compatible or what's gone and all that. This game has been available for quite some time now. been around for a while. It basically consists of a bunch of little mini games, which players are going to build a little, uh, you know, team of like, you know, offensively, defensively, while they go ahead and compete with little mini games and see who wins the game. Uh, that's basically baseball highlights they have a two-player in case in fact if you want to try this out uh game nerds i think has a um game nerds has like the starter set available for like ten dollars in fact eagle griffin games on the website has a starter set available for like five dollars i think but i don't know what the shipping difference is there and i assume your chance of getting to a hundred dollar order on game nerds is higher than on eagle griffin games but in case you're interested in trying out the uh spring fever i think it's called spring fever those are available very, very cheaply if you want to check those out and just get a sense of what the game's like alternatively you could just back it on crowdfunding over here as far as should you back it should you not will it hold its value instinctively i think not it's hard to say for sure baseball highlights is a popular enough game and there's a ton of copies of the game out there on the second hand market the biggest question is trying to hunt down the right things. I think this new version will have more demand relative to the older versions because, again, it's relatively affordable. So even though it's kind of putting all the things together, it's uh, you know adding new stuff, getting rid of old stuff, and here's the newest version of it. At the end of the day, the price point on it is pretty decent, so I think there'll be some degree of demand for it. The tricky part is if it's forty eight if it's forty eight dollars from a sixty dollar price point. Once you factor in the shipping on that as well, I just don't think you're saving enough for it to be. I think it'll be cheaper down the road just buying it from you know game nerds or miniature market, whatever. So it's not that I think it's a bad price point. It's not that I. I think it won't be in demand. I think this will just be easier to get your hands on it down the road. I think the retail availability will be a little bit too easy, so likely a pass on this one. Moving on, we have Gearwax Deluxe Edition plus new promo cards. We've still got coffee left. 281 backers, 13 days to go, $7,300 raised so far. This is an older title that, uh, this is an older title from, um, from uh, Peacekeeper Games, and it represents a bunch of extra stock they have. In fact, it's worth mentioning because I usually call out the whole limited pledge thing which is mostly gone by this point, fortunately. But the limited pledges you see over here are actually limited. They're not little gimmicks because basically what you're looking at over here is you're looking at extra copies of Gearworks that have been around for quite some time that you can go ahead and get your hands on them. You can get your hands on the base game, you can get your hands on the deluxe game, you can get your hands on the playmat. There are some extra pr promo cards that have been printed for this campaign, so you can get your hands on those as well. In fact, a lot of people have been just buying those. So you have the two promo cards for $34, and they have the three promo cards for uh, $6. The reason for that, by the way, is because one of these promo cards was previously available. So because of that, in order to not force you to buy something you don't need, he did this two promo cards for those who already have the, the Tantrum House promo over here. But past that, the basic idea of the game is going to be a Sudoku-style card laying system. You're placing cards down into a grid, you're trying to control for, you're trying to get sparks from the way you place cards into the grid based on how numbers add or subtract to your central number, but you're also trying to take control of rows or columns to get the various components you need 
to be able to go ahead and trade those components in for the uh, contraptions that you're trying to uh, build every single turn. Do that across three rounds and do that so do that slightly better than other players while restricting the uh, restrictions, while respecting the restrictions of the board. That's the main little hook over there because you have to respect the restrictions because you can't play your cards, you can't play the same color in the same column and you have to play the cards in ascending left to right order, either or. You, once the, you kind of define an order from highest to lowest or lowest to highest on each row and so you're trying to respect multiple restrictions while using your sparks to avoid those restrictions and or draw new cards do contraptions and figure out your way forward in the game you can check out my review on the channel you can check out a bunch of other content from other channels as well but that's the basic idea of the game the price point on the game is very affordable over here. We have $23 for the standard game plus playmat, of course, shipping as well. We have $27 for the deluxe light game plus playmat. Deluxe light, I think, just means it doesn't have the slip cover, but it has everything else, I believe. And then we have over here, we have the standard game plus playmat. We have the deluxe game plus playmat. Are these all gone anywhere? No, we still have left. We still have left on these, although maybe not. Now I'm not sure. This says pledge, but it's grayed out. That's interesting. Is that a temporary thing? Give me a second here. Let me just refresh the page over here because I thought those worked earlier, but that might have changed. Oh, nope, verifying I'm human. Give me a second, Kickstarter. Definitely human-ish. Scroll down. No, they're grayed out. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know what's up with that. Anyways, so some of those are not available anymore. Okay, well, uh, past that, as far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. Uh, your options to get you this basically right now are the secondhand market or this campaign for the most part. This game does not have any uh, long availability. It's been around for quite some time. It's an older game and you're dealing with some overstock over here. I will say... <coughs> sorry. I will say that as far as the secondhand market goes... You can see you can see copies of the game going for less than this already. So I'm skeptical it will hold this value on the secondhand market if it's not a game for you. Moving on, we have Under Our Sun from Tabletopper Games. 85,000 euro, 567 backers, 15 days left to go. Under Our Sun is a cooperative or semi-cooperative experience that takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, a very uh, Dune-adjacent world, although it actually kind of reminds me of Waste Nights, thematically speaking, if you ever played Waste Nights. But basically... In the game, you're going to have a bunch of characters, you're going to have your own goal, you're going to have your goals that you're going for, you're either playing a cooperatively or semi-cooperatively in the game, while you wander around and try to gather your things and complete your goals and the, the different missions you'll be going on in the game. Uh, the pledge levels for the game are going to be, let's see if we can scroll down and find them over here, pledge levels for the game, if we can, are we, I think we skip past the pledge levels, so we have shipping for the game, it's going to be 10 to 18 euro for the base game over here, but it goes all the way up to 16 20 to you for, uh, for the all-in pledge, and the uh, pledge levels are going to be over here, 85 euro for the combo pledge, 67 euro for the core pledge and 125 euro for the solar storm pledge the base game as is is a one to four player experience but as you add character packs you could enhance the i believe you can enhance it to five to six player experiences from those and we have a miniature pack as well so if you want to get extra miniatures to represent your various well miniatures in the game that's all going to be available there and we have an all in place for 147 euro for the game and a bunch of various stretch goals for miniatures to dice over here karma dice the custom trade insert all these various things have been added deluxe box all those fun stuff for the game as far as should you back or should you not will it hold this value i'm skeptical it will the game looks pretty decent overall there's definitely i mean 85,000 euro from a first time creator doing totally fine five or six seven backers they definitely found an audience but i think that they haven't found enough of an audience and i think this is one of those games that's doing well enough in crowdfunding but i think the retail presence or availability will probably be limited and i think that uh, um, I think that you'll have a hard time getting people to pay those prices down the road once the crowdfunding's over. This one falls into those ranges where it's like, hey, if you want to support the creator, if you want to guarantee your copy, by all means. But otherwise, I'm not seeing a strong enough reason to back this one right now. We have Veil Fate Tribunal. We have 4,800 4, backers, $649,000 raised, and a $50,000 goal, 15 days to go. Veil Fate comes back to crowdfunding from Ivy Games, from Ivy Studio. Uh, this time it's bringing you the Tribunal expansion. There's a whole lot of deluxification to go through this video. I will try to focus on the very high notes over here. Veil Fate is a strategic deduction game. The basic idea is you are controlling a demigod, but no one else knows which demigod you're controlling. You're trying to ensure your demigod wins, and you're trying to be subtle enough that you can actually go ahead and uh, finish, finish cross the finish line without players stopping you because they realize you're trying to win, but you're not so subtle that no one realizes who you are because you're playing poorly. That's the balance of the game when you go through it. That's the general idea. At uh, six, seven, or eight players, there's also a team mode where you team up with another player, and then you're both controlling the same demigod, and you're working together with other players but you don't necessarily know who you're working with you're trying to figure it out because if you can do so you can help yourself uh, set your, set up your ally for good plays in the game but then in the game itself uh, we have the tribunal expansion which is going to add a bunch of new things now the tribunal expansion first of all there's this uh, nice little uh, cat metal castle metal or plastic castle in the middle you can go ahead and get your hands on which is a fun little addition to the game but we also have the tribunal expansion is giving you a bunch of components 
We have Hadria over here, who is a fun little thing where Hadria basically changes the way, way the game plays because any player who has more points than Hadria automatically can't win. This prevents runaway leaders because anytime someone gets too far ahead, all the other players can collectively ensure that Hadria just doesn't go too far ahead herself and contribute to her being on top of the game and forcing players down, which completely changes the game and also allows you to be more subtle as you play through it. I have played with the Hadria expansion. I cannot see myself ever playing uh, Veil of Fate without the Hadria expansion. I think it's fantastic. I have not played with the other expansions, so I can't speak to that. That. If you haven't you haven't seen coverage on this game from me because I think Veil of Fate is a very solid game But frankly, I don't play it enough right now I think it's a game that I enjoy most at the higher player counts with teams But uh, again, I, I generally put in pretty specific I think Veil of Fate at lower player counts is probably a 3.5 for me uh, 3.5 out of 5 and I think Veil of Fate at a team player count is a 4 is a 4 for me It's a very solid very strong game But I usually would only play it at 6 7 or 8 which is not a player count I get to the table that often these days that said Hadria is fantastic I don't think I'd ever play without Hadria we have the Celestial Expansion, which gives you asymmetric roles. It gives you something totally different to focus on in the game, where you have some other little puzzle going on. Maybe you're trying to figure out all the other players. Maybe you're trying to ensure that certain gods are in the back of the track. Maybe you're trying to ensure that you have a, a paired god, and you have one, well, you have two gods, and one of them has to be in the top three, one of the gods, and one of them has to be in the bottom three. You have all these different little mini goals that completely change the way you play it, so you have a little uh, asymmetric role being given to a player in the game, totally changes the way the game plays. And you have the three titans, Roman influence. These are going to be different titans that I have no idea if they do, frankly, but they look cool, and I'm sure they do fun things in the game because that's what Veil of Fate does. That's going through the Tribunal expansion, available for $49 over here, with a bunch of free add-ons. That's going to be your Kickstarter. Well, that's not, no such thing as free, but, you know, taken taken into account in the price point. Uh, as far as past that, we have the wooden board, so a bunch of other things are going to be added here. I cannot go through everything. This will be a very long deep dive in this campaign alone, but the wooden board is back if you want that. It's also back with a box that can host your wooden board. We have Deluxe City over here for $20. We have a bunch of these over here. Anytime you see that free over here, that means it's part of the Tribunal pack, and it's technically X amount of dollars, but instead Instead, you're getting it for free as part of your tribunal pack as part of the extras. So we have the holographic pack over here, the community cards, we have the Providence expansion, the exclusive box art, we have the Adventures expansion, the Make It Metal over here. So uh, they are making some, well, metal stuff. Uh, the original Veil of Fate had metal miniatures, they have those back. Although if you have the original metal miniatures and you gain the expansion, you might want to pay an extra 20 bucks to get the, the original metal, metal miniatures again because they're changing the wash and the look. So if you want to make them all match, they have that option. They're giving it to you at a cheaper price point, but you still do have to pay for that. So that's, uh, you know, unfortunate, but it is what it is. We have the various all add-ons, we have the access pass exclusive, all of that, and we have, you know, all of that stuff there. So as far as pledge levels, we have $49 for the Tribunal expansion, plain and simple. We have the $89 for the Tribunal make it metal. Make all the stuff metal in the Tribunal expansion, that's going to be $89. We have the Veil of Faith plus Tribunal for $125, and then we have Veil of Faith plus Tribunal plus make it metal for $209, and that's, the $209 is not the maximum you can pay for this game. You can pay more for the game if you're trying to get absolutely all the stuff for the game. You can check out a fantastic campaign video from, uh, from, uh, oh my gosh, um, Oh my gosh, so what's it called? Uh, not Austin. Austin and uh, Zach. Dear Lord. I was like, I want to say Max, but Max sounded wrong. This Austin, Sam, and Max. Austin, Austin, Sam, and Zach. I don't know why I'm trying to call Zach Max today. I feel bad. I think there is a Max at Ivy Studios. I think there is, but I could be wrong. Anyways, uh, that's basically the idea over there. There's more stuff to go through on the campaign. There's an absolute ton of stuff to scroll through. There's tons of videos and, and t t testimonials and other things. You got more things. You got the, the renewal dice. I'm not going to focus on everything. There's so much to go through on this campaign. We have over here, we have the upgrade your base game. You got more medals and more miniatures. We have a box for the wooden board over here. There's so many ways to make this completely obnoxious as far as how premium and deluxified it is. And all of it does look very cool. It all fits in your shelf. Look at that. Look at that. Look how look how cool that was. You got the box for the original base game, the Veil of Fate expansion, and then the with the castle as well. That's going to be how what you have for Veil of Fate, which means. coffee's done i'm not done scrolling that's basically everything we got over there that's all the stuff and this is also designed by um robert robert uh, robert let's just say robert designed by robert who did the uh did Moonmakers, as well as has a bunch of games coming up from from um what's the company bite wing games coming from bite wing games bebop shuffle and swing from bite wing games Anyways, that's basically all the stuff there. Should you back, should you not, will hold its value. Very short version with Veil of Fate, Veil with uh, Ivy Studios is yes. Most of the stuff will hold its value <coughs> if you are getting on crowdfunding. Usually the stuff uh, does a very good job at being expensive and hard to get your hands on it and does a generally generally very solid job at holding its value on the secondhand market because of the uh, price points they give you on all the crowdfunding stuff and all the extras you can get your hands on over here. It's a lot of money. You do not need their games. You do not need the most premium versions of the games. But if you do want to get them and you find it's not for you, usually you can find someone who's willing to take you off your hands and uh, give you what you paid for it. Moving on, we have Armello the board game. Armello the board game from... Oh, I'm saying it wrong. It's not Armello. It's like Armello? Arm... However you pronounce it, the board game. 
Coming to you from Quicksilver Studios over here. 2300 backers, 17 days to go. Uh, this is basically going to be, well, it's a board game of the video game that was inspired by the board game. That's basically the idea over here. Now, I don't know a ton about the game over here, unfortunately, but it's basically going to be some degree of deck building, wandering around your kingdom, trying to eventually power up and take down the king and whatnot. Uh, again, based on the video game, if you've played the video game, which I have, but it's been a long time. Uh, the game looks gorgeous, I'll say that. The box looks gorgeous, the art looks gorgeous, the components look gorgeous. Everything here looks great. I am very intrigued as to how well this one plays. Uh, but it's going to be basically be $79 for the uh, core game over here, $109 for the deluxe edition, and then $150 for everything Armello. That's going to be the one that has the most backers following that one for all the various deluxifications. Miniatures look great, sculpting looks great, board looks great, everything about the game looks phenomenal. It has me very intrigued to dive into this one, and frankly, I'm surprised it's not doing as well, I'm surprised it's not doing better than it's doing. Like, it's doing great, it's doing totally fine with, you know, $305,000 from a first-time creator, that's great. I would have thought this had so much more appeal, although, whatever, it, it is what it is. But again, still doing well. I just would have thought it's doing better. Maybe I thought Armello was more popular than it actually is, or maybe the audience hasn't converted for some reason. I don't really know exactly why. But ultimately, as far as should you back, should you not, will hold its value. I have a giant question mark in this one because everything I'm seeing here makes it look premium, makes it look like the kind of game that does hold its value. But also, I would have thought that it had more people following it already, which means there is some degree of. There's some degree of drop off in what I thought the interest was versus what the interest actually is, despite how well the campaign is doing. And that means I have the same question mark and skepticism as, you know, hey, great, it's a reasonable price point for a whole lot of premium stuff for a very deluxified board game, but will that translate into people wanting it down the road when it shows up and people, you know, they already back what they back, they're looking at the next shiny pretty thing, and they actually have to figure out what they are and aren't playing, will this still have that same appeal? And I just don't know, unfortunately. So I'm putting a giant question mark in this one. I could see it holding its value. I could see it not holding its value. It's hard to say hard to say on this one but it looks very very pretty and very shiny i am very interested in this game i don't know nearly enough about it unfortunately i know you should have a bit more information on how the game plays but this one i just don't have that unfortunately uh so apologies for that oh you can check out a bunch of fantastic videos from dice tower from before you play from a bunch of other channels uh if you want to get that information in more in detail and that basically brings us to the last campaign of the day which is going to be robot quest arena Go back to and I bought Battle from Wise Wizards of Games. This is basically a uh, deck building game, a deck building skirmish game. You're going to have an arena, you're going to have a bunch of bots over here. These are plastic, adorably pre painted bots over here. And you're going to basically be gathering a bunch of cards to build out your decks as you try to figure out which uh, melee cards, which movement cards, which economy cards, which defense cards, which, uh, you know, shooting across the board cards, or what, what different items you're going to have as you build out your deck and try to basically take down your opponents. Uh, there's no death in this game per se. When you die, you just respawn, but your life points convert into points for the various team members or the various enemies that have taken you down. So it's basically a deck building skirmish game, which is exactly what I said. Very fun, very simple appeal, very um very it's got a very it's got a very strong simple direct appeal to it combined with absolutely gorgeous components that really hold like these these pre-painted miniatures are fantastic. They're cute. They really invest you into the characters as you wander around the board controlling your bots in this bot battle arena. Lots of like lots of positive testimonials from Dice Tower, from Set Up Sit Down, Mavis Meeple, etc 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 as you go through this over here and there's lots of various bots for the game. There's a lots of ways to spend money on this game which makes it hard to break down all the various factors but i'll try to do what i can over here or at least i'll try to do what i can let's go to the reward tiers so if we go to the um let's find the um sorry one second i'm trying to find the tiers here we go the new bots tier for 89 dollars you simply get your hands on the new bots it's going to give you the new bots then just to be clear new bots does not mean just new bots new bots also means new cards uh sometimes new uh new aspects some of the original new bot packs had new new uh mechanics that were added to the game as well so you're getting a bunch of new content you're not just getting new characters you're getting new characters new cars new tokens new everything new new terrain elements, stuff like that to be added to your game. Don't think of it purely as just, oh, I'm getting four extra characters. You're not. You're getting additional content for the game as well. We have the new player tier over here, $69 to get your hands on the base game, plain and simple, straightforward. But it also gives you the exclusive promo pack from the original campaign, which is important because otherwise you should just be getting this online because it's cheaper to get your hands on get your hands in the game from your online local game store. You're paying for the reason you're paying for this here, plus shipping as well, is because you're getting that Kickstarter exclusive pack of extra stuff. We have the everything new tier which gives you the Kickstarter exclusive stuff for this pack over here, the bot battle pack over here. We have, um, oh, this is actually the new bot battle. This is the new bot battle promo pack because they have an old bot battle promo card pack. Anyways, you have the new thing over here, everything new, the giant storage box, the extra arena map, the various new bots, the extra tile packs. We have the all bots tier, giving you all the bots, the base game, all the extra seven bots. So all the, the new bots that you have in this campaign, the original expansions, uh, the there were a few expansions that brought you new elements from the original campaign that brought you new gameplay elements. And you get both Kickstarter packs, the original and the new Kickstarter pack. And we have all in tier for $329, bringing you all the stuff, absolutely all the stuff if you want all of that. There are 
lot of ways to spend money on this game. The tricky part is if you look at the secondary market, if you look at eBay, if you look at Board Game Geek, the Kickstarter exclusive stuff for this game has done well. This game has been received fairly well, which means people have been hunting down that Kickstarter exclusive stuff. And again, if you look on eBay, this thing, like the original game that sold for like, you know, 70, 80 bucks or whatever it was uh, for the all in on Kickstarter last time. If you look on eBay, that stuff is selling for, for twice the price of what people paid for it for the Kickstarter exclusive stuff specifically. Because the base game as is, that's available at retail. There's no reason to pay extra for that stuff. You can get your hands on it easily enough. But if you want the extra stuff that you couldn't get your hands on, the stuff that's hard to track down, the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, that stuff is doing very, very well on the second hand market, which means that as much as there's a lot of ways to spend a lot of money here, and a lot, as much as it's almost eye rolling how expensive some of the stuff is, you are getting deluxe pre painted miniatures. Whenever you buy those packs, for miniatures you're not just getting miniatures you're also getting promo packs and all these extra you know card content for the game that enhances your gameplay further and ultimately the biggest thing is if you are looking and interested in that stuff some of this stuff will do fine holding its value just fine now i can't break it down every single thing by tier because there's a lot of ways to mix and match it but if you are looking for the stuff the kickstarter exclusive stuff for this game this is a popular game it's in demand it has done fairly well and that means people want that kickstarter exclusive stuff so as much as it's expensive, I don't think, I mean, keep in mind, you can buy just the base game and a few extra stuff that you find here and there, go on eBay, hunt down something that you can find, you'll have plenty of gameplay content for this game. If your goal is playing the game, there are many affordable ways to play a lot of aspects of this game and get a lot of fun from this game without breaking the bank. Uh, get the original game on retail, get the new bots over here, and you're good to go. You have a ton of content. But if you are looking to spend more and you're curious about whether it'll hold this value, it looks like a lot of it will do fairly well because of the Kickstarter exclusive stuff and the popularity around the game. It's, it's always hard with these things because, again, I'm looking at how expensive some of the stuff is and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm telling you that this will hold this value. But for some of it, it seems to be doing just fine. So that that is the, the trade-off over there. And that's basically everything, which brings us to our picks of the week. It's been a long video. It's been a lot of long videos recently. I don't know what... I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to talk as fast as I possibly can, but I can't get, I can't cover it all. But anyways, picks of the week. For picks of the week, we usually have two picks of the week. We have the uh, personal interest pick of the week, the game I am most interested in, and then the game that I think will hold, that's most likely to hold this value. For my personal interest pick of the week, actually, let's go with the value pick of the week first. For my value pick of the week, I'm going to go with Veil of Fate over here. Veil of Fate Tribunal over here. This one is, uh, you know, uh, Ivy Games, Ivy Studios in general. This stuff does a tremendous job holding its value. It always holds value to some extent, and especially in between print runs or the harder to, ha harder to get your hands on stuff, that stuff does even better. So uh, overall, I think this one is likely the value pick of the week. And then for my personal interest pick of the week, if I can go ahead and find it over here, we're going to have Roth. Roth over here, and I debated, it was between this and Armello over here, because I am very interested in Armello, but I don't know enough about it, so I think this is like more the FOMO driving me, versus Roth. Roth is a very solid game, I really enjoyed it, I have some complaints and nitpicks, but I think a lot of those things are still stuff that will be ironed out. A chip of three games, very much for many of their campaigns, they do treat it like crowdfunding, they have like, hey, here's where we are in our vision, we still need to tweak and adjust and finish things, but this is close enough to the final thing that you're getting, we're going to start talking about it, but we are still open to feedback and changing things. I do hope some things get tweaked and adjusted and improved on. But as it was, it was a very rewarding area control game with asymmetric powers that played in an hour, generally speaking, and it gave me a lot of fun for the experience. So I am very interested in Roth. That's going to be my personal interest pick of the week. That's basically what we have, which means as far as campaigns coming up next week, we have Requiem Downfall of Magic is going to be coming uh, over on Kickstarter. 6,500 uh, backers in this one. Uh, 6,500 followers, not backers. I wish there was backers. They wish there were backers. But 6,500 followers on this campaign over here. Just play this one today. Uh, you can expect some coverage on this one coming. There's going to be a gameplay and a first impression thoughts video coming out. And then we also have the Dead Keep from Command over here from Simon coming uh, on GameFound. Well, this is a pre order, not crowdfunding, but it's going to be launching over on GameFound. This one, I just finished the rule book for it. Uh, I did an unboxing, you can check that out. And I hope to be diving into it as soon as I possibly can. But frankly, I'm waiting for them to send me a scenario because right now I know how to play, but I don't actually have a scenario to play the game. And that's what we have. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one. What do you call a paper airplane that can't fly? Stationary.